22,500 kilometers of coastlines, 4,000 kilometers of length from Gibraltar to the coasts of Levant, 2.5 million square kilometers, corresponding to 1% of the Earth's seas. Its deepest point touches 5,093 meters, and every liter of its water contains 38 grams of salt. Its temperature never goes below 10 degrees centigrade, mitigating the climate along the coasts. And its tides never exceed 55 centimeters, with the exception at Venice and in the Gulf of Gabes. Its promontories and its bays have seen the rise of the first millenarian civilizations. Today, 30 million people of 20 different nations that share several fundamental aspects of their culture, history, maritime and religious traditions, live along the coasts of the sea in between the lands, united by only one sea, the Mediterranean. Born from the great movements of the Earth's crust, its long geological story has created indented coastlines, bays, islands, volcanoes, and mountain chains, becoming the most fascinating zone in the world. The long story of the Mediterranean starts about 250 million years ago, when the great movements of the Earth's crust, under the stress from its bottom, started to break the supercontinent Pangaea into the continents Laurasia to the north and Gondwana to the south, separated from each other by a narrow sea strait, the Tetis. It is from this inhospitable sea that the orogenetic processes formed the big mountain chains that today border the Mediterranean basin. Huge strata of marine sediments, accumulated during millions of years in the depressions nearby the continents, are uplifted, bended, progressively buried, and finally subjected to great vertical and tangential strain, almost parallel to the Earth's crust. Remnants of fossils of marine animals, set into the sedimentary rocks like precious jewels, remind us of their past origins, born from the sea depths in the course of millions of years. From the 5th and 4th centuries before Christ, Greek philosophers noted with astonishment that shells, corals, and remnants of other marine organisms could be found even on the top of the mountains surrounding Athens. How did the sea arrive so high? Was the intuition of Leonardo da Vinci the truth? And if you say that nature has formed shells into the mountains from the action of the constellations, how could you explain the fact that the latter create shells of different species and of different ages in the same places? Since then, fossils were retained to be the only remnants of biological organisms extant during the past geological times, and not lusus naturae, jokes of nature. Only after more than 180 million years will the continental plate movements give to the Mediterranean a shape more similar to its present form. Since the appearance of the first men, its geological and biological features have conditioned the diffusion of humans and the development of its activities along the coastlines. Natural caves facing the sea like the Guatari cave situated at Circeo during the Middle Paleolithic, hosted an ancestor of the modern man that was hunting in the valleys today occupied by the sea, the man of Neanderthal. But it is only in the last thousands of years that the great historical civilizations settled permanently near the shores, thanks to geological and hydrological environments favorable for their birth, development, military defense, and commerce. The ancient Phoenician, Greek, and Roman sailors, knowing winds and sea currents, and using the lights of the Etna and Stromboli volcanoes to orient themselves at sea during the deepest nights without stars, 
sailed across the Mediterranean for centuries with their ships for commerce, fishing, conquest, and exploration. Sometimes only a few remnants of these shipwrecks are found on the seafloor, and the traces of their routes that touched the farthermost harbors of the Mediterranean are testified to by their cargoes of ceramics, amphors, and rocks used as weights to stabilize the ships during navigation. Is it possible to reveal the secrets of the geological past of the Mediterranean to understand the natural phenomena that happen in its waters still today? Can earth sciences and geophysics give us an answer to the occurrence of even catastrophic events that have repeated throughout time? The Mediterranean Sea, as it is squeezed between continents, is a unique environment able to keep jealously in its rocks the evolution phases of its history. Researchers involved in geological, geophysical, and oceanographic studies observe its canyons, coasts, and volcanoes, measuring physical and chemical parameters to unravel its secrets and understand its present state, pursuing after the traces of its past with the goal of predicting its future evolution. Geological and geophysical investigations individuate the main evolutionary stages, marked by the occurrence of great natural phenomena that have caused large impacts on the environment and humans. Archaeological studies show us the historical changes of the sea and the vertical movements of the Earth's crust occurring along the coasts. Nowadays, the Mediterranean is considered not only a complex hydrological system, vital for people who live along its coasts and that exploit its resources, but also it is one of the most complex tectonic zones of the Earth, where great geodynamic and geophysical processes take place. And it has become, in this way, a real natural laboratory for modern scientists. Since ancient times, its waters and coasts represented a challenge for the most advanced scientific researches. The first important theories on the Earth's shape and on the formation of continents have been formulated here. And always here have ranks of scientists since Greek times up to today, such as Plato, Plinius the Elder, Dolomieu, Mercalli, tested and contrasted their findings. Scientists are aware that this area of the Earth has passed through several critical events, which even occurred in a few moments, but which were capable of producing great environmental and morphological changes, as Plato has us remember. In front of that narrow mouth named Columns of Ercole, there was an island. And this island was greater than Libya and Asia together. And one could pass from it to other islands and from the facing mainland, too. Being occurred extraordinary earthquakes and cataclysms in the round of one day and one bad night, all in mass collapsed under the earth, and similarly the island of Atlantis disappeared into the sea. On the contrary, the slow astronomical movements, such as the Earth axis oscillations, have induced climate changes which have occurred in the course of thousands of years, and even changes of atmospheric and oceanic circulation. To know the geophysical processes that act on the Earth's surface, inside its crust and mantle, and in the sea depths of the Mediterranean, allows us to understand the mechanisms that regulate its geological evolution, such as the interaction between the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, mountain building, volcanic eruption, and earthquakes. If the first mountain chains began to build up around 200 millions of years ago, it is between 115 millions of years ago, from Cretaceous to Miocene, that the tectonic forces formed the Alps and the Apennines. The Mediterranean is an area geologically very complex. 
è il risultato dell'avvicinamento lento e progressivo della placca africana verso nord, verso uh, eh, la placca eurasiatica. Questo moto di avvicinamento di deriva dei continenti ha uh, prodotto uh, una tettonica molto complessa nell'area, uh, formando una serie di un mosaico di microplacche che eh, si sono mosse e si muovono in maniera indipendente l'una dall'altra e producendo formazioni di bacini molto profondi e di catene montuose come, come il nostro Appennino. L'accomodamento del, del processo di convergenza tra queste due grandi placche però eh, è stato dominato principalmente dal processo di subduzione, che è un processo attraverso il quale la litosfera oceanica, nel nostro caso di età giurassica, affonda nel mantello. Questo processo eh, lascia dei segnali molto chiari in superficie, come la liberazione di energia sismica, i grandi terremoti che registriamo anche nella nostra penisola, e eh, processi vulcanici, con le fusioni, per esempio, e eh, la formazione di archi vulcanici, come quelli delle isole Eolie. I segnali geologici di questo processo sono ben testimoniati lungo la nostra penisola e lungo tutte quante le aree del pene mediterraneo che sono caratterizzate dalla formazione di questi piccoli archi molto stretti come l'arco di Gibilterra, l'arco Calabro, l'arco del, delle Alpi Occidentali o l'arco dei Carpazi e ancora l'arco Ellenico che sono proprio il prodotto di, eh, il superficiale della formazione in profondità di questi processi di subduzione. I dati geologici e i dati geodetici mostrano che questo processo di subduzione che durante gli ultimi milioni di anni sconvolgeva il Mediterraneo dal, dalle sue propaggini più occidentali fino al Medio Oriente, oggi è ristretto solamente in alcuni punti al di sotto della Calabria, nell'arco ellenico e, molto, e in maniera molto localizzata anche sotto l'arco dei Carpazi. Later on, the Straits of Gibraltar let the waters of the ocean enter into the Mediterranean. Sometime later, about six million years ago, the continuous motion of Africa towards Eurasia closed the Straits of Gibraltar, separating the Mediterranean from the Atlantic Ocean. This fact induced a period of intense evaporation, and the Mediterranean was transformed into a large, hot and salted lake, where thick salt strata were depositing during a period called Messiniano by geologists. One of the evidences of these events of intense evaporation are the salt mines of Real Monte in Sicily. They remain to witness the strong environmental and climate changes experienced in those times from the Mediterranean. Today they are industrially exploited and the salt of the ancient Mediterranean is used worldwide. Siamo all'interno della miniera di Real Monte della Italcal S.P.A. a circa 200 metri sotto il piano di campagna. E questo giacimento salino si è formato milioni di anni fa quando c'è stata l'evaporazione di tutto il mar Mediterraneo. Questa è una zona molto particolare in quanto ci troviamo vicino alla Cainite e quindi con, questi, con questo sale di diverso colore, con questa stratificazione di diverso colore perché cambia appunto la composizione chimica, mentre nelle altre zone dove il sale è più bianco quello proprio il salgemma, quello eh, che conosciamo anche per usi alimentari. The Straits of Gibraltar, after closing and opening repeatedly some more times, induced the drying of the Mediterranean in further stages. Five and a half million years ago, it reopened definitively at the end of the last evaporating phase. The cold waters from the Atlantic Ocean entered into the Mediterranean with their life forms. It took thousands of years to submerge the dry valleys, canyons and volcanoes, transforming this part of the Earth's surface and rendering it as it can be seen today. After the huge basin was filled, the clay and limestone sediments rich in foraminifera deposited above the evaporites. During the following epochs, the sea level of the Mediterranean rose and fell more times during the climate changes. During the Tyranian period, 125,000 years ago, 
it arrived to a maximum of about plus 7 meters with respect to its present level. In that period, characterized by a climate hotter than today, when the Mediterranean was like a tropical sea, its seafloor was populated by typical fauna of hot climates, such as the Strombus bubonius, a gastropod that once lived along the coastlines during a climate period classified as MIS 5.5 by geologists. And it is possible to find it as a fossil along the coast still today. Further traces of the ancient sea levels at elevations higher than today are witnessed by the holes of lithophaga, the so-called sea date, that perforate the rocky limestone coasts between the high and low tide zone. Another evidence of the past sea levels are the marine terraces, which are surfaces flattened by the abrasive action of the sea. These, under the vertical tectonic thrust, today can be found uplifted even to hundreds of meters above the present sea level, as for example along the Tyrrhenian coasts of Calabria in southern Italy. During the Quaternary glaciations, the seas retreated and most of the emerging lands were covered by the ice sheets. During the last glacial maximum, about 18,000 years ago, when the climate was cold and Europe was covered by ice as thick as 3,000 meters, the Mediterranean Sea was about 120 meters lower than today. In those times, the Koska Cave, located along the coasts of France, was inhabited by men who painted its walls with pictures of penguins. Ten thousand years later on, other men will leave the traces of a progressive climate warming that was causing the melting of the polar ices and the subsequent sea level rise. Island of Levanzo, Sicily. The vaults of the Genovese cave show graffiti and paintings of animals that today are extinct. La scoperta di questa grotta è nel 1950. La scoperta una ragazza di Firenze, una delle prime turiste in 50 anni a Levanzo. Ma questa grotta si chiama Genovese perché, come racconto storico, si dice che inizia il 1700 c'erano dei genovesi che giravano per queste isole con le loro navi. E loro con le navi si veniva a riparare in questa cala e con lo scio questa cala riparata. Si pensa pure che venissero anche questa cala a rifornirsi di acqua dolce, però là sotto c'è una sorgente di acqua dolce che esce quasi a livello del mare. Sono stati trovati degli utenti in ossidiana in selce, resti di cibo, come resti di bovi, di equi, di cervi, resti dell'elefante nano, che è un animale preistorico. I graffiti sono del politico, le pitture sono del neolitico. Nel Paleolitico 12-13 mila a.C. Levanzo e Favignana sono attaccate al litorale trapanese, marittime già un'isola. Infatti nel primo periodo vediamo solo scene di animali, quindi si pensa che loro vivono solo di caccia, vanno a cacciare queste mele dentro terra siciliano. Andiamo al secondo periodo, al Neolitico 7-8 mila a.C. Nella seconda declaciazione si staccano Levanzo e Favignana. Infatti cominciamo a vedere che una maggior parte di pesca, pesca come avvistamento, infatti diamo il tonno, che qui passano i branchi di tonno che vengono a deporre le uova nei bassi fondali, quindi c'è la pesca, l'allevamento, c'era sia un'evoluzione marina che terrestre. Delfino, guardate il tonno e delfino, il tonno lo segna molto più tozzo, il delfino più affusato nel becco ben pronunciato, un altro animale può essere un porcellino o un cinghiale delle maschere, una mucca è la donna che la conduce, cani, uomini. Also, the global isostatic adjustment contributed to change the sea level along the coasts. This geophysical phenomenon, which started with the melting of the ice sheets after the last glaciations, ended about 7,000 years ago. The decreasing ice load on the lithosphere and on the underlying mantle triggered the uplift of the Earth's crust at the high latitudes, while at the lower latitudes, away from the center of the ice cap, a subsidence started. The internal Earth's mass had to reach a new equilibrium to balance the load changes at its surface. To make a simple example of this large-scale movement, let's sit on a soft pillow, the Earth, 
that compressed by our weight, ice and ocean load, recovers its shape after we have risen, reduced load of ice melting. This slow and non-homogeneous phenomenon, which in the northern Earth's hemisphere propagates from northern Europe to the south Mediterranean area, can be represented in its temporal and spatial evolution by mathematical models. The, um, the role played by the ice sheets uh, on the ocean volumes is quite complex. In the first instance, you obviously have changes in the ocean volume. When ice sheets melt, the uh, ocean volume increases and sea level will rise. But in addition, the crust response to the changing loads on the on its surface, the unloading of the ice, the loading of the meltwater, deforms the earth. And the sea level change, of course, is the combination of the change in the ocean volume and the change in, in the land movements. And in the Mediterranean, for example, the land is still responding to the removal of the ice from the last glacial period with the result that sea levels here uh, have been rising steadily for a period of time and will continue to do so simply from something that happened in the distant past. The reconstruction of the past sea levels in the Mediterranean is done also using the speleothems, stalactites that formed into inland natural caves, but that today can be found in the sea depths. They are a source of extremely precise information. Ma alcune grotte che oggi si trovano o a livello del mare o sotto il livello del mare ci danno delle testimonianze importantissime e utilissime per lo studio delle variazioni del livello del mare perché oggi si trovano sommerse, quindi sott'acqua e quindi non sono più attive. Una volta sommerse dal mare, queste stalattiti sono state concrezionate da animaletti marini, da organismi che si chiamano serpulti. Questa è una stalagmite, vedete tutte le concrezioni di carbonato di calcio. In questo momento è arrivato il mare e ha sommerso la grotta. Facendo una datazione dell'ultima parte continentale bianca e della prima parte marina, noi con una certa precisione sappiamo quando il mare è arrivato in quel punto alla profondità alla quale abbiamo campionato la stalattite. Quindi campionando stalattiti e stalagmiti a diverse profondità è possibile ricostruire l'evoluzione del livello del mare eh, eh, dal punto e dalla profondità in cui noi abbiamo campionato la stalagmite fino a quasi ad oggi. Riuscendo a datare eh, rispettivamente le parti marine e quelle continentali, è stato possibile ritornare indietro di 260.000 anni. Inserendo nei modelli climatici questi dati, ora è possibile comparare il periodo caldo di oggi col penultimo periodo caldo e fare le adeguate valutazioni sulle questioni relative a effetto serra, riscaldamento globale, eccetera, eccetera. Seven thousand five hundred years ago, the Mediterranean Sea, whose level was progressively rising along the coasts under the climate warming and the isostatic effect, arrived up to a critical point. Due to the tectonic action of the North Anatolia fault system that was moving due to the collision between Africa and Eurasia across the present Bosphorus in Turkey, the waters of the Mediterranean broke the morphological barrier that separated them from the Black Sea. A salted river flowed across the Bosphorus into the fertile plains below, submerging them rapidly. The Black Sea, previously a large continental lake of plain water, linked itself to the Mediterranean. The American scientists, Ryan and Pittman, were the first to intuit and discover the possible traces of this catastrophic event that perhaps inspired the story of the Sumerian king Gilgamesh and the Universal Flood. From the book of Genesis 7.11, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th of the month, just in that same day, erupted all the springs of the great abyss and the cataracts of the sky opened. Thank you.
The waters flowed with a power hundreds of times stronger than those of the Niagara Falls. The Black Sea was rising at about 15 centimeters a day and took hundreds of days to complete the catastrophe that changed the landscape, erasing the human settlements placed along those coasts. After this new catastrophic event, the level of the Mediterranean Sea continued to rise progressively. During the last 2,500 years, its changes are witnessed by the several archaeological sites that along all its coastlines are found often submerged. From the observation of these sites, the marine archaeologists obtain important information on the story of the coastal settlements, while geologists and geophysicists can measure the changes along the coasts. Il Mediterraneo è l'unico luogo al mondo dove possono essere effettuati questo tipo di studi per la presenza di numerose strutture archeologiche lungo le sue coste che conservano le tracce delle antiche civiltà e delle culture che si sono succedute nell'arco degli ultimi 2500 anni a partire da quelle più antiche come quella fenicia o quella greca per poi arrivare fino alla grande colonizzazione di epoca romana. Vengono studiati e censiti i siti costieri in buono stato di conservazione che fondamentalmente sono costruiti da peschiere, strutture portuali e cave e soprattutto vengono valutati per il loro grado di affidabilità. Questi particolari siti costieri sono caratterizzati dall'avere dei settori o dei singoli elementi architettonici che vennero costruiti in stretta relazione con il livello del mare. La valutazione e il confronto dell'attuale quota a cui si trovano in questo periodo rispetto alla loro quota originaria permette di utilizzare queste strutture come indicatori per le variazioni del livello del mare. Se fino a qualche anno fa le strutture archeologiche costiere erano studiate soltanto dagli archeologi, da qualche anno sono diventate di estremo interesse anche per geologi e geofisici. Infatti permettono di studiare le variazioni verticali della crosta terrestre e quindi di conseguenza valutare le variazioni del livello del mare. These observations, integrated with geophysical instrumental data and by mathematical modeling, show variations that change from site to site, but all in agreement to show an average sea level rise of 1 meter and 35 centimeters along the Italian coasts for isostatic and climate causes. Greater accelerations occur in the volcanic areas, such as at Baia, in the Flegrian fields, collapsed even more than five meters, or at the small island of Basiluzzo in the Aeolian archipelago, where a mooring dock of Roman age is now at four meters of depth. Mohamed Soussi of the University of Tunis studies the African coasts of Tunisia facing the Mediterranean. So as you can see we are uh, near the sea on the coast of Tunisia in southeastern Tunisia not far away of Jerba Island and um, Tunisia includes several segments that can help in uh, the improving of our knowledge about sea level variation and to predict some scenario about the future. The geology and the remnants of coastal constructions of Phoenician and Roman age show that this zone, without volcanoes and poor seismicity, once placed at the margins of the ice sheets during the last glaciation, demonstrates that sea level changes of only a few tenths of centimeters have occurred in the last thousands of years. Anyway, recently the sea has become more aggressive with respect to the past, and the coastlines are rapidly retreating.
The coastlines of the Far East facing the Mediterranean, placed outside the range of influence caused by the isostatic effects, shows that in this area, the Levant, during the last 2,000 years, underwent minor changes of the sea level of only a few centimeters. Dorit Sivan of the Haifa University reconstructs these changes along the coasts of Israel, settled by humans since very ancient times. No, this is the harbor, this harbor at present. The inner harbor and is here. So in. H or... Well, we reconstructed the uh, ancient sea level uh, of, along the coast of Israel during the Holocene, mainly based on archaeological uh, evidence. The Great Coastal Works commissioned 2,000 years ago by Herod the Great such as the harbor of Caesarea, the pool of its great villa, or the pier built by the Crusader soldiers around the year 1000, the latter partially realized with granite columns taken from the nearby Roman buildings, do not show substantial sea level changes in the last 2000 years. Caesarea uh, first originated in the end of the first century by uh, King Herod very qu uh, quickly and she immediately became a huge city. This is why we have, uh, first of all, a lot of uh, archaeological uh, structures in which we can actually extract very good um, information about Palo sea level since we have a lot of data and all this data is well uh, is uh, well preserved and well dated during the last decades the seismic and volcanic activity in the Mediterranean Sea has been constantly monitored by the Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology by modern terrestrial and marine geophysical networks and space observation as well. The data collected through advanced technology sensors allows for the surveillance of the most dangerous zones, potentially capable of originating strong earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The Mediterranean si trova nella zona dove la placca africana e la placca eurasiatica si scontrano. È uno scontro estremamente energetico che dura da tanto tempo, durerà ancora per molto tempo e questo genera terremoti, liberazione di energia sotto forma di terremoti e anche di attività vulcanica. Quindi tutti i terremoti che si registrano dallo stretto di Gibilterra fino alla Grecia, alla Turchia, nascono da questo eh, scontro fortemente energetico. Multi-beam sonar surveys reveal bridges and abyssal plains, deep valleys and submarine canyons, generated by still poorly known great tectonic structures that release seismic and volcanic activity. Molte delle strutture tettoniche attive che sono la sede di fenomeni che determinano rischi naturali quali terremoti, vulcani e conseguentemente tsunami giacciono su fondali marini. Ricordo che il nostro pianeta è per sette decimi coperto dalle acque, questa parte del pianeta è la parte meno conosciuta. Nel Mediterraneo abbiamo strutture molto importanti su cui sono stati fatti degli esperimenti, quale ad esempio il vulcano Marsili, che è un vulcano che giace nella piana batiale tirrenica a 3500 metri di profondità, 70 km x 20 km e raggiunge quasi la superficie, rimanendo a circa 500 metri dalla superficie del mare. Altre zone molto importanti sono quelle ad esempio della zona del Mar di Marmara dove la, una grande importante faglia, la faglia anatolica, l'attraversa, anzi lo determina, è stata sede in passato e sarà sede di grandi terremoti. L'ultimo terremoto è stato eh, quello del 1999, il cosiddetto terremoto di Smith con magnitudo 7.4. Anche in quell'area si stanno conducendo esperimenti per conoscere meglio fenomenologie quali ad esempio la correnza di terremoti e il rilascio di gas eh, del, dell'interno della Terra. Fino a pochi anni fa non era possibile pensare di andare a fare esperimenti di lungo, di lungo termine, di lungo periodo, dell'ordine dell degli anni eh, sui fondali marini, per limiti di carattere tecnologico. 
Oggi questo è possibile e possiamo aprire una nuova finestra di conoscenza del nostro pianeta anche attraverso una conoscenza migliore del suo interno e dei, conseguentemente di tutti quei fenomeni che conducono ai rischi naturali. Tutto questo ha portato eh, a livello globale a sostenere e a lanciare programmi per la realizzazione di reti multidisciplinari permanenti sui fondali marini. Per citare i migliori e i più grandi esempi sono ad esempio Neptune in Canada, eh, Ocean Observatories Initiatives eh, in, negli Stati Uniti, eh, Donet in Giappone. L'Europa, attraverso la, la Commissione Europea, eh, ha lanciato e sta finanziando eh, una grande infrastruttura di ricerca, eh, una rete permanente nei fondali marini intorno all'Europa che viene chiamata EMSO, Europea Multicinema Siflor Observatory, che è attualmente coordinata dall'Italia e dall'NGV. The Marsili is the greatest submarine volcano of the Mediterranean. It rises for more than 2000 meters from the bottom of the Tyrrhenian Sea. Its flanks, steep and fragile under the inner push of the magma and the force of gravity, could collapse, causing dangerous tsunamis that would strike a large part of the Italian coast of the Tyrrhenian Sea and of the nearby Mediterranean countries. The island of Stromboli, December the 12th, 2002. A strong eruption triggers a landslide that produced a tsunami that hit the nearby Aeolian Islands, Sicily, and the continental coasts, causing damage and scaring the population. The Mediterranean still today shows the scars of the extreme events that struck it during historical times. The small and steep island of Santorini in Greece is all of what remains of the great eruption of 3,500 years ago, caused by one of the most powerful volcanoes of the Earth. Incandescent lavas, tempests of ash and tsunamis caused a catastrophe that was so great as to be capable to change the climate and condition the story of civilization. The volcanic cone that built up during the previous millennia first collapsed and then exploded during the eruption, cancelling the traces of the ancient Minoan civilization. It was not the first time that the Mediterranean had witnessed such catastrophic scenes. These apocalyptic events had already struck it some thousands of years before men could hand it down to posterity as during the Campania eruption of the Phlegraean Fields, about 40,000 years ago. L'area vulcanica napoletana è tra le più rischiose e pericolose al mondo. Sotto e nei dintorni del Vesuvio insiste una popolazione di circa 600.000 abitanti che rende unica a livello mondiale come area vulcanica ad elevato rischio con così alta densità abitativa. La storia eruttiva del Vesuvio, ma anche dei campi flegrei, ci insegnano che queste due aree vulcaniche hanno dato eruzioni tra le più catastrofiche conosciute in vulcanologia. Ricordiamo le eruzioni di tufo giallo e inimbritiche dell'area campana o le eruzioni pliniane per fare un esempio del Somma Vesuvio. The eruptions also produce strong vertical ground movements. An evidence of these phenomena are the submerged remnants of the rich Roman villas of Baia in the Phlegrean fields. Fenomeni bradisismici sono stati noti fin dall'epoca romana. Quasi tutti i grandi notabili e nobili romani avevano una villa nell'area di Baia e di Pozzuoli. I ruderi di queste ville sono diventati per noi del XX secolo un marker dell'attività all'interno della caldera. It is the 24th of August of 79 AD. A new strong eruption hits the Campania Felix of the Romans. Vesuvius in a few hours destroys the rich cities of Pompeii, Herculaneum, Stabia, burying them under tens of meters of burning ash, causing thousands of victims and changing the face of a whole region. 
The victims of that tragedy rise today from the solidified lava, reminding us of the strength of the eruption, as in the narration of Plinius the Younger. The sea was absorbing itself and seemed as retreating due to the earthquake vibrations. A black and terrifying fog, broken by lightning of fire blows, was ripping and emitting flames of elongated shape. A short time later, that cloud landed on the earth, covering the sea. It had already surrounded and hidden Capri, under, already taking away from our sights the promontory of Miseno. I turned back, and a dense darkness was incumbent at our backs, and flowing on the earth was following us like a torrent. During the following centuries, other eruptions continued to make victims and changed the geography of the coast of Campania. As in 1538, when in the Phlegraean fields was formed the Monte Nuovo, the new mountain. Or even in 1906 and 1944, when Vesuvius stirred again from her slumber. But the danger does not only come from volcanoes. Strong earthquakes can cause fatal tsunamis. A tsunami, a Japanese word that means tidal wave, occurs during an earthquake or a submarine landslide. Uno tsunami è un treno d'onda che si propaga in mar aperto. Le onde di tsunami o di maremoto sono caratterizzate da una grande lunghezza d'onda che va tipicamente dai 10 ai 100 km. Un'altra caratteristica fondamentale delle onde di, di tsunami è la loro grande velocità di propagazione che può raggiungere i 600 o anche 700 km all'ora ed è proporzionale alla profondità del mare che stanno attraversando. In particolare eh, più il mare è profondo più le onde di tsunami si propagano velocemente. Gli tsunami possono essere generati in modo diverso, ma sicuramente il meccanismo più, più frequente è l'innesco di tipo tettonico. In questo caso un grande terremoto sottomarino eh, provoca una deformazione del fondo del mare. Questa deformazione viene trasferita istantaneamente su tutta la colonna d'acqua sovrastante e crea quindi una instabilità di tipo gravitativo che interessa un enorme volume della massa oceanica. Quindi vediamo che la superficie del mare da una parte tipicamente si abbassa, dall'altra si innalza e in questo modo si mette in moto eh, l'onda iniziale dello, dello tsunami. Successivamente l'onda di maremoto si propaga su tutto il, il dominio dell'oceano e, e mentre si propaga e si avvicina verso, verso le coste acquista maggiore energia aumentando in particolare l'ampiezza e provocando in questo modo l'enorme distruzione che, che si vede in questi, quando un tsunami impatta sulla costa. Il mare Mediterraneo eh, ha conosciuto nella sua storia degli ultimi 2-3 mila anni numerosi eventi di maremoto. Possiamo ricordare in particolare eh, il terremoto del 365 d.C. avvenuto in prossimità dell'isola di Creta che provocò uno tsunami di vaste proporzioni che interessò tutto il bacino del Mediterraneo e provocò eh, in particolare enorme distruzione in Egitto, ad Alessandria, e interessò anche le coste dell'Italia meridionale, in particolare le coste della Sicilia orientale. The Roman harbor of Falasarna, located to the most western point of Crete Island, in the center of the Mediterranean, demonstrates to us the destroying force of the earth, capable of generating earthquakes and tsunamis. In the year 365 AD, in a few seconds, the coast where the harbor was located remained uplifted by about seven meters during an earthquake of magnitude greater than eight. This area was abandoned and the harbor ceased to work. 
Its docks, with their moorings ready to tighten the ropes of the ship still today, is now 150 meters back from the sea. And it is the destination of scientists looking for the traces of ancient earthquakes and of tourists unknowing of its exceptional history. The great squared blocks used for the construction of the harbor still preserve the last traces of life before the catastrophe, when they were inhabited by Serpulidi, a kind of marine encrusting worm. If earthquakes uplifted Crete, on the other hand, the southwestern coast of Turkey downlifted, lowering into the sea whole villages, from the Lycian to the Byzantine ages. Houses, tombs, thermal plants, piers for mooring of ships are now at some meters of depths into the sea due to the action of the Hellenic arc faults that cause frequent earthquakes and Earth's crust deformations. It's the 28th of December, 1908, when the Mediterranean is shaken by a new large tsunami that struck the coastal cities of Messina and Reggio Calabria in southern Italy. The earthquake of magnitude greater than seven is released by an invisible fault called by geologists a blind fault, as it does not reach the Earth's surface and was located in the middle of the two shores of the Straits. The powers that act in the deep of the Earth hurl forth all their destructive energy. During the earthquake, tsunami waves even higher than 10 meters are formed. The Earth's crust is downlifting by more than one meter along the coasts of Calabria and Messina, and two of the greatest coastal cities of southern Italy are completely razed. At least 60,000 people died under the collapsing buildings and due to the tsunami that torrented away the boats of the fishermen. But the true number of victims, perhaps more than 120,000, will never be known. As in a clock, the time of the Mediterranean is scanned by the great movements of the tectonic plates that modify its borders, by large earthquakes, and by eruptions, able to cancel islands and cities in a few moments. During the next 100 million years, the continuous converging movement of the African and Eurasian plates will cancel forever the Mediterranean and its history. While waiting for the conclusion of this slow process, the unresting seismic and volcanic activity the climate changes and the sea level changes will modify the coastlines and the landscapes, continuously conditioning human activities. Some scientists predict that by the end of this century, due to the climate changes and isostatic effects, the Mediterranean could rise even up to one and a half meters along some coastlines, with a strong impact on the human activities. Coastal cities will be flooded, and subsiding areas will suffer an accelerated marine invasion. Marine erosion will be more intense, and man will adapt himself continuously to the progressive retreating of the coasts that threaten the works of man. Per quanto riguarda la misura delle variazioni del livello del mare, queste vengono effettuate attraverso eh, strumenti tipo radar altimetri che osservano la superficie marina dallo spazio e mareografi che sono strumenti che sono collegati alla terraferma lungo le coste. Entrambi eh, questi eh, sensori ci indicano, in particolar modo i mareografi, che la tendenza di risalita del livello marino al Mediterraneo avviene a una velocità di circa 1-2 mm all'anno. La combinazione dei dati archeologici e dei dati strumentali, e oltre a quelli geologici ovviamente, ci ha permesso di determinare che il livello del mare nell'area mediterranea sta crescendo continuamente e a partire proprio dall'epoca romana oggi sembra aver subito un'accelerazione anche consistente. The Earth is a living planet in continuous evolution since the moment of its formation. The growing industrial development 
and the ever-increasing population make it more vulnerable to the natural catastrophic events. Its dynamics have always conditioned the evolution and diffusion of man across the Mediterranean. If its unique environment has encouraged the birth and prosperity of the modern civilization, it is a task of man today to know and respect the environment, to be able to cohabit with natural risks that can threaten its life. Our life is dependent on the large forces acting inside the Earth, which are able to modify its surface and the environment. For this reason, we should not be amazed if the ancient populations which flourished along the shores of the Mediterranean considered earthquakes and eruptions as Earth's wonders, desired by the gods. An ongoing and continuous research activity becomes fundamental to improve our knowledge on the dynamics of our planet and of the Mediterranean, to protect ourselves from the pitfalls of the natural risks. Will we be able to give an answer to the questions raised by one of the last explorers of the Mediterranean, William Henry Smith, Rear Admiral and Cartographer of the British Navy, who in 1854, sailing on its waters, was measuring sea depths, coastlines, and observing its geology. The same land is sometimes raised up and sometimes depressed, and the sea is simultaneously raised up and depressed, so that it either overflows or returns to its place again. Would any of our most practical geologists express any other opinion at the present moment? <laughs>